Hello everyone, welcome back to Obsessive Prepper AZ. Today I want to do another chit chat video about preppers helping preppers. And we do not all know everything. And by all of us being able to interact through these questions that I get, helps us all out. Now I was asked by one of my subscribers, Betty Jane Feltz. Hey honey bunch, I always enjoy your videos. I have a question about raisins. My sister gave me three large containers of raisins. I sealed them in jars with oxygen absorbers and my food saver. And now I'm concerned about the moisture content in them. Is there a way to know if these raisins are still good after a year? I am unsure if it is safe to save raisins long term. Have you ever stored any fruit that has some moisture in it? I really appreciate all info you give us. Thanks. Betty, these are great questions to ask. I brought this up years ago when I first started food storage. I was so overwhelmed with answers that I never got a correct answer. So this is calling all preppers so we can help answer these questions for each other. And I hope the comments down below, we can have interaction and discourse figuring this out. So in my older videos, I asked for help on oxygen absorbers or not. In my older videos, I had asked for help to use oxygen absorbers or not. So there's a ton of comments in this video if you wanna check it out. But I wanna bring up a current discourse about it because I still don't have all the answers on it. I hear that if you put O2s into your dried fruit, things like that, raisins, fruit, that you could get botulism from them. So is there somebody out there that has a direct answer for us? I know when I store dried fruit, after about a year, it gets extremely hard. Raisins, we know, storing them in a box or a container, they're going to get hard. I still think we can use those dried raisins by reconstituting them, using them in something like a muffin or a bread mix. Um, I do a cookie recipe where I reconstitute them with rum and I make a rum raisin cookies from them when they get too dried. I would say probably two years on a raisin. Now something like dried fruit, like my apples that I dehydrate, I've ate up till a year and a half and then we run out of them. But do people have answers, a correct answer about O2s or not with dried fruit? Because this is a valid question we all run into. Chocolate, you know, do you put O2s in it? I have, since I've done this video, I do not put O2s in any of my chocolate or any of my dried fruit anymore. Am I doing right or am I doing wrong? I don't know. When I seal my jars with my food saver, I suck the oxygen out, but before it sucks all the oxygen out, I turn off the machine. I want to seal it just enough that my cap is sealed on there. I've removed some of the oxygen and I've not had any issues with that. And I do this with my nuts also. So uh, this is something that please, everybody, let's have this conversation. Those of you out there that are more well-informed than we may be, please give us an idea of what, if we can get botulism, can she eat those raisins after all this time with O2 absorbers in her jars? I wanted to address a video also that I did, my 10 bucks a week food challenge, week 10 through 11. And somebody had asked a question about why am I doing food storage long term on flour when I had said in a previous video at Christmas time what I'd learned from my preps that I wasn't storing it. I didn't mean that I wasn't storing flour anymore. I just don't do the amounts that I used to store. I used to store, give or take at any given time, about 120 number 10 cans of flour that I did through the LDS church their cannery. I also did at that time five gallon buckets. If you want to see my food storage, check this video out. It's an older video and it kind of gives you an idea of what I stored. But I wasn't able to rotate my flour. So a lot of my flour was going rancid. So I ended up donating it. It wasn't rancid. You could just get that different smell that it was turning. So I ended up donating it so that it could get used. Now I still store number 10 cans of flour 
and I also do like what I showed you in the video of the gamma lids with the two gallon buckets I still do that but I just don't store as much what I do do for long-term food storage is hard white wheat and hard red wheat hard red wheat you can get 25 30 years with it and it's not going to go rancid hard white wheat I'd say 15 to 20 some people have even gotten longer so those are the things that you want. You don't want to store processed flour that long. You need to rotate it. You need it not to turn rancid. Another thing is I don't have my family at home. Everybody's grown up. I have kids coming and going, but nobody at home anymore. So I'm not baking like I used to. I'm not doing the cookies and the breads like I used to. So I need to be very leery about what I store and that's something in preps. Our preps are going to evolve over time, over how old you are, how many kids you have, what you can store, what you can eat. So those preps are evolving and my preps evolve also. Also in that 10 to 11 week challenge, I show you storing flour and sugar in a two gallon bucket with a gamma lid. I did not put my product in Mylar bags because I had no intentions of putting it out in my food storage. Now, if you want to store your product in food storage, you should put it in a Mylar bag, throw some oxygen absorbers in it, seal the bag, and then put it in your five gallon bucket. I had said when I did it, airtight, watertight. I was not meaning that if we were to submerge the bucket in a pool, that it would not leak. It will leak. What I was saying is airtight, meaning dust, bugs, that kind of thing because it does have a seal but it didn't suck the oxygen out and waterproof I meant if there was rain or any water around it was waterproof if you were to put it in a pool like I said in a if it flood it would be submerged it would leak so that's one of the reasons why you want to put it in mylar bags for long-term food storage I do have a subscriber his name is Bill and he's in the United Kingdom and he's asking about things for food storage. And when we talk about long-term food storage, it doesn't always need to be Mylar bags. Now something we here in the United States take for granted is what we can get, commodities, what other countries cannot get. He doesn't easily have the availability to get mason jars, the food saver, the mylar bags, oxygen absorbers. He has to bring all this in. I have another gal that lives in the Netherlands and jars are very expensive. So you can do other things for food storage. It's not always putting it in a mylar bag oxygen absorbers. We all know over time, even if we have spaghetti noodles or beans on your shelf, they're still good. What we're trying to do is remove the oxygen or the light, keep them in a cool place. We want to keep them rodent and bug free. If you don't have the means of having mylar bags or food saver or mason jars are just too expensive, think about saving your jars cleaning them, sterilizing them, things that you might have a ragu in or fruits or vegetables, save those jars. You can definitely store your dried ingredients in those. What we're trying to do again is keep them bug and rodent free, try to keep most of the oxygen out, keep them in a cool area, keep them dark, light oxygen destroys product, and there are other ways. I also had somebody recently address that when they do put their product like pasta in Mylar bags, it's knocking holes in the bag and it's not doing any good. I have in previous videos showed you I've had that problem too when I've used my food saver bags. What I do is I plastic wrap them after I put them in the bags, run some plastic wrap like we're doing bubble wrap around it but it's plastic wrap then we're taking all that sharp edges away and then put it inside your mylar bag. I did a video where I did rice aroni that way. I wrapped the rice aroni boxes with plastic wrap, got rid of all those hard edges, and then I put it in the mylar bag. So there are things that you can do versus just putting it directly into that mylar bag. Storing in mason jars gives you that win-win. You don't have to worry about it. I do so much pasta in 
my glass jars. It's crazy. I do. I do my green beans like dehydrated in my glass jars because if you've ever dehydrated a green bean and then try to put it in a food saver, a mylar bag, it'll eventually put a hole in that bag. So jars are just awesome. Save your jars. Hey everyone, I'm at the doctor's office right now waiting for my girlfriend. She's having surgery and I'm kind of doing my homework for this video I just posted and I wanted to share this site that I came across and it's the dehydrators blog and if you come to this site and I'll leave the link down below in the description it gives a full detail of what I just discussed on everything to do about dehydrated you know I've dehydrated a lot but specifics on things I've never had the full information on and uh, I go over light and temperatures moisture one thing or another but they go into full detail here of how to store certain dried foods goes over the fruits vegetables things that might have a little bit of moisture and also leveling out that moisture years of how to store it how long so I want to just kind of go through this and show this to you and I highly suggest to go over to the site and check it out also I still would like to see comments from everybody of how long and how they store their food um, specifically dry fruits because of uh, the information that we get from each other sure helps and uh, Mary I believe was her name I might be wrong because I don't have it in front of me but asked the question about the raisins and things so I would love to hear from everybody I hope I answered some of the questions. I hope we can all have this discourse again. I think these videos help each other out and we can talk and learn from each other. I just got back from uh, an 18 day trip with my husband out on the road and uh, we went down to Daytona Beach had a great time. I did those videos. They're on Highwayman Trucking. If you want to watch our 18 days out in a truck, again, some people have seen some of the videos and they think I'm still out on the road. I kind of do the videos kind of overlapping a little bit because I don't want to have videos where people know I'm not at home. So, you know, you all know as preppers, people don't need to know our business of when we're coming and going. And, uh, but I just highly suggest if you want to see some more things about our life that isn't just prepping, go over to Highwayman Trucking. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. And if you want to be notified for future videos, ring the bell. Have a blessed day.